cool nowadays. Okay, there we are. Ooh, wow. All right, that's an easy fix. All right, this is for editing purposes. Thank you. Streaming in three, two, What's up, what's up, what's up? How you guys doing out there? I have no idea how loud this is, but we're just gonna see. And I am Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer. How you guys doing out there? How you guys doing? How's it got? How you guys doing? And guess what? If you missed the credit sequence or the opening sequence to the show, welcome to an episode of Coffee and Conversation. Now we're putting this in the fluff talk slot because right now the Viking is kind of stranded on the island and he can't make it here to the Wizard's Tower. And since the dragon attack, I have not been able to get my happy butt out there. But as I was saying, this is Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer. How you guys doing? And I have got to make sure that I can see everything. Oh my God, look at this, look at this. I'm not exactly happy with what I'm looking at. Oh, no wonder. Boom, all right, now let's see if I can, oh, yeah, that's a lot better, look at all that. All right, this is good, so I am going to make sure that everything is seeable hey look at us there all right there you go i needed that right <laughs> there because i have got some news for you now i know you guys are used to coffee and conversation being an interview show you know we've had guests like barbara kiesel and marv wolfman and you know like um ben jackendoff and just a whole bunch of other people and shout out to you david rankin i have not forgot about you my friend and today we have got some super special guests here talking about their new application and their game design and all that stuff. And I am here with the creators of Gensem RPG with Mr. Daniel Kelfi and Stephen Lopez. Say hi to the people. Hey, how's it going? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I even, you know, you guys even got a little title bar down there. So, hey, hey look at all that. Holy y'all. Yeah, so um, what we are here to do is to... Honestly, have some coffee. Ooh, look, no branding. <laughs> and some conversation. I'm totally out. It is Friday night. Um, for those of you guys that were watching Twitch earlier, um, again, this is, ain't gonna lie, tired, tired, tired. Did not plan on doing a film review today, but the last video up on Twitch, and of course you can check out the YouTubes um, to get the Aquaman review that we have up and going because, well, that's just the way we roll and all that jazz. So, um, I want to say, like, since we're doing that whole thing and all that jazz, um, again, we have to do the thing. We have to do the thing because it's the beginning of the video and people have short attention spans and all that jazz. So, and you know, of course, to get my um, to get my thing out. So, if you wanna if you wanna talk to us and all that other stuff, or send us or contact us with any things like questions, what we're doing, you know, how many turtlenecks you guys want to know I have, just <laughs> then you would want to send the email to backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Um, check out the archive that's over on YouTube. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger every day. Now, if you guys want to know anything about the guests that we have on any of these shows, then you guys are going to have to follow us on the Twitter. That's right. The one place where the president in the United States can tell you exactly what he thinks at any particular time and you can find out what we're up to. Now, if you guys stay away from Twitter because it's a wretched hive of scum and villainy on the internet, not that I think so, but that's what I've been told, you can always join the Facebook group, Deckers on the Book, where you can see where you guys and us and all the other Deckers are playing, what we're building, what we're painting, what you guys want to talk to. If you guys want to start sending us clips of games or old commercials like you know, oh, I don't know, Crossfire, Crossfire, <laughs> things like that, um, <clears throat> then you would post those things on Deckers on the Book. Now, if you're a lot like me and you spend all day 
driving, then you shouldn't be watching us at all. You should be keeping your eye on the road. We are here in Southern California. We don't want accidents because it makes our commute even longer. But you should totally listen to us at https um, colon slash slash soundcloud.com um, slash bid underscore p. That's right. Go to our SoundCloud and listen to our audio archive for all you guys that don't like looking at our wonderful little punums. And if you think you don't have time for that, well, guess what? You can download the audio, keep it in your MP3 collection for free forever because that's how much we like you. And of course, follow us on the Instagrams where you can do all that other stuff that happens on Instagram. Now, a really quick announcement while the music is still going. Guess what, people? We have all of the different ways of begging that we like using from you guys, which means we have got our GoFundMe page, which is still up. I'm actually pulling that up right now because I am not very professional, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, oh, wrong button. I love it when I do that. Um, yeah, we have our GoFundMe page, and um, that is to help us take care of the immediate um, equipment like switchers and <clears throat> you know all that other jazz, and you can just go find them right here at GoFundMe.com slash BID underscore P. And for those of you guys that really, really like what we do and want to make sure that I can pay people to be on here, because that is the number one reason that I launched one of these, is to make sure that we can pay our guests and have all the games that we need to review and all that stuff, instead of you guys, what's the term I'm looking for, um, instead of you guys giving us stuff, and I mean, don't get me wrong, we love the donations, okay, we love the donations, we love that you guys like us, but the biggest help that you guys can be right now at this juncture in history is head on over and become a patron at our Patreon. We got four backers, but we lost it this week. And hey, look at that. The Aquaman Fresh Reaction and Review is up there, and it was put there at a quarter to six Pacific Standard Time. So we are on top of all that jazz and all that stuff. That's right. We have stuff that's like locked up and you can't see it because you're not a patron. So you got to come on over, um, get access to all of our stuff we send you guys gifts and gaming stuff and all that stuff and of course everybody wants to talk everybody when they talk to me always wants to tell me what i should be doing for the show you know hey you should totally do this or you should cover this game or you should cover that become a patron and i'll tell you you will have way more sway than people that blow up my cell phone but with that I am definitely going to say, I hope that this music is playing. There we go. Yeah, the music should be playing now. But that's all right. I'm going to turn it back down because it is time to get started with our show. And I'm tired of doing all the begging posts. So, um, thank you guys for showing up today. And um, how you guys doing? Because, you know, yeah, what, what's going on? Good. How you guys doing? Good. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, see, now these guys were just talking up a storm we like were 20 minutes talking ago. Up a storm. And it's like, oh man, the camera's on. I uh I'm camera shy now. I got to stop. No. <laughs> to, to be to be fair, you, you you were talking the whole time. So. That's true. That's that's very <laughs> true. I do. I, again, this is coffee and conversation. So I am on that stuff, man. I'm it is almost like I'm doing a whole bunch of things that they've made AMC television shows about, except it's not blue, <laughs> it's fantastically <laughs> caffeinated. Wait, is so, that actually coffee in there? Yes, that is coffee in there. This is all coffee. I'm Did totally you need a refill? Yeah, right I, I, I gotta get some. All right, yeah, no. Um, again, oh, hot water. Yeah, we will shut that stuff up, but that's okay because, again, you were in the Wizard's Tower, you were mm -hmm. with a wizard, yep. and I will say, hello. Um, so... Uh, we'll, we'll get you some more coffee in right, just right. a few minutes, but I actually, you know, and again, I actually want to, um, <clears throat> I actually want to talk to you guys about a bunch of stuff. We've been trying to hook up and do this show right. for like weeks, haven't yeah. we? It's just been, it's Since been crazy. Since Unpub, since yeah. un uh, I think a few days after Unpub, we... Unpub? Unpub Mini. That's the event, that, 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 you didn't, me that, um, <laughs> the event that you didn't know that you went to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but let's just pretend I know what you're talking about, and right. they don't. What was right. Unpub? Unpub, it's, it's called Unpub Mini. It was uh, an event at a game store whereby people that didn't have published games yet and wanted to publish games ended up uh, showcasing some of their stuff, whether it's, um, whether it's uh, stuff that was 
still work they're still working on or stuff that they had kind of completed and prototyped they had it there just to, to showcase and promote all right so. fantastic yeah um seriously like the night that we met I was game testing something else for you guys. I went to the local gaming store, which is Guildhouse Games. Guildhouse in Games. In Bellflower. Thank you. Yes. Um, you can check that out at, at backinthedeck.com under the page stores that are friendly. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, I was there and I walked into this thing and I'm like, what, why are all these people in a game store? It's Saturday night. And this guy was there saying, oh, you want to check out that thing that we do? And I thought he was hitting on my girlfriend for a minute. And I'm like, cool somebody's hitting on my girlfriend that's great because you know again well when you're young it's like are you talking to my woman but by the time you start getting my age it's like i hope somebody talks to my woman or maybe i'm seeing something i don't know i'm still a little bit shallow but um <laughs> but yeah so that that is a major thing and you know and fortunately she was doing she was doing the work for the website while i was doing some work for the website right and yeah so she was just like oh dude this guy is developing a gaming app and all this other stuff and i'm like cool let's try and hook up in any of that stuff and then dragon and you know the whole wizard's tower got trashed and i fell behind Oof. on work but you know what we are here now so how was your guys's week and you know that that's what my Oof. thing is like well what's going on with you guys that you wouldn't mind telling the deckers and all that stuff you want to start oh absolutely nothing <laughs> <laughs> he codes primarily all day like this. ah okay he does yeah uh, the working man working man yeah, I had a whirlwind of stuff happen to me, but it's mostly stuff that's outside the game. I actually have to stop doing the game stuff for a little bit to take care of some things that were <laughs> pressing. So nah. now that they're they're subsiding a little bit, things are slowly moving along. I'm gonna get back into writing the game. Cool, very cool. Now, when you say writing the game, um, that means like you know you're doing an app, and again, right. um, it's not just. I mean, let's face it. This is the 21st century, and there is there is an app for that. We already know that you know it's. Um, I want to get um, I want to get some new shoes. There's an app for that. I want to mm -hmm. get a car. There's an app for that. Um, and you decided to hop onto that by pretty much saying, "Oh, you want to get a game started? Well, you might be a college student. You probably live in a dorm, or you live at your parents' house, and you don't have a library." to stash all these books and you mm -hmm. and you guys then decided to take that matter into your own hands right well sort of i've been developing the the back end for this game it's but it started off with an idea to have a tabletop role-playing game okay um to actually distribute books like a tabletop role-playing game books um but i quickly realized how intricate the game was going to become so i decided let a let a computer do that and an app would be best to, to handle it Okay, so essentially you tried to make a computer program that not did the work of the GM, but just made being a player <coughs> that much easier. Both actually, um, there's the the features that are co they're going to come to the game are things like you'll be able to play eventually you'll be able to play online over uh, over the internet with maps that are are there for the GM, and it'll have a kind of like a Discord section where you can you can um, tell the story nice. while you're online and across the world with characters and stuff okay so you'll be able to, to gm everywhere and you'll have a something like i guess you could say a gm shields a gm console where you can do things in the game and the game will spit out the the necessary information to the players nice. as the game can as the game goes along and it also logs it all that's what it's, it's going to be it's going to it's going to log everything so if you want to go back and look at a particular game mm -hmm. that you played you can see what happened during those times okay during, during you know the, the whole course of, of your character's history. So it archives and it archives and catalogs um, your game plan. It kind of keeps a lot of notes for you. Right. That is awesome. That is seriously seriously awesome. I know. Um, I run a game a week. Yeah. And I run one big game per month. Okay. And um, mm -hmm. I can tell you, like again, I've been gaming since the '80s, and a lot of a lot of the deckers out there have been gaming for that long and some are getting into it and they're new and all that jazz. Right. Um, but one of the things that's what I like to call a phantom cost mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. RPGs, like, you know, when you buy a house and nobody tells you about property taxes. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. You know, or HOA one of the, or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So one of the phantom cost of RPGs are the copious note taking and a whole <laughs> lot of the researching. Like, seriously, um, 
if you're if you're new to RPGs and stuff like that, <coughs> hope you like reading because <laughs> yes. there's going to be a whole bunch of it. So you kind of designed this app to do a lot of this stuff, or you the idea for this was to kind of circumvent that, but still have access to everything that you would have to study so that you can get along with playing. Is that it? Um, more so than that, there. They, the idea, the vision that I had I, that I want to have and the, from feedback and stuff that I got was I want to have different levels for different types of players. Mm -hmm. And I've even talked to someone about this at Unpub Mini. Um, she actually gave me the idea to have different modes when you when you open the app on, on a phone or wherever you're opening it on, like a tablet. Mm -hmm. Different modes where you, when you want to do an action, you just select your action, what you want to do, and it'll just tell you success or failure. You don't oh. know numbers. You don't need to know what what rules are behind it. It's literally for the players that don't know anything about any games, and they just want a storyteller to tell them a good story. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that you're making a RPG that you don't need copious amounts of notes, a degree in calculus, or even <laughs> dice for? Exactly. What uh, madness is this? Now see, now what do you think this I guess is? It gets even more <laughs> maddening because then there's, there's going to be the intermediate level where it shows you the numbers that are relevant to the character. It shows you the big numbers, the attribute numbers, the... the Numbers you roll, you roll because mm -hmm. it's gonna have a virtual dice roller. Um, the and at the end, if I if we can, I want to code so that it can recognize pips on dice, so you can use a camera to to view dice that are rolled. Wow, you're but, killing me, man! So that's, you're telling me <laughs> that's the idea. that you're making this app to where you have the option of taking copious amount of notes or not. You right. have the option of using dice right. or letting the app do it for you. Right. R really, if anything, it's it's the option to hide away the complexity that you're not concerned with. Yeah, those intricate <clears throat> those intricate things about the game, that's stuff that gets bogged down. And I I want to have the intricate game, but I don't want to get it bogged down. So when, let the app do it. Let the app handle it. When, when, when Player side or GM side. When you're talking about when you're talking about stuff that that it's, it's very very complex for for a new user or for a, for a very occasional player. Uh, they, they don't. They don't want to look at this stuff. They don't want to see the numbers. They don't want to see. They, they, they just want to hit attack and have something get hit. <laughs> break stuff. And they want to break stuff. So the, the, the idea is the app. The app does everything that you would normally do with a pen and piece of paper. Uh, just hides it away so you don't have to deal with it and saves you a lot of time. You don't have to look up rules or, or you know, understand differential calculus. Oh right. my God. So that is okay. So um, if I can, um, Daniel, if I can get you to just to scoot up just a little oh, bit, sure. get a little. Get a little closer. There we go. Yeah. Just to make sure everybody can hear you and all that stuff. Right. But, you know, what I'm hearing you guys say um, is, what can I say? Um, I'm looking for the proper adjective, and I think it is amazing for RPGers like me. Right. Okay. Um, as, <clears throat> as we know, and we discuss this on a lot of shows, guys, um, RPGers <clears throat> or tabletop RPGers come down to two different categories two main categories which are um the role players mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. role players I'd, I'd and, say uh, a third huh i'd say a third oh hit me um there because you know you have games that are diceless mm -hmm. so those are the ones that are, are maybe maybe not even beyond role as in oh mm -hmm. i'm playing a role not maybe not beyond that but sort of sideways lateral where mm -hmm. they want to hear a good they're campfire people they want oh, to yeah. hear a campfire story. The storytellers. Right. Well, yeah. not just the storytellers, but the ones that are just want to sit there and like, oh, this is amazing. This is an awesome okay. story. They're, they're not necessarily ready to act, mm -hmm. you know, like take a role. They'll tell their actions, but they want to hear what's going on in the ah, story. Ah, the ones that want to hear the description and all that stuff. Yes. Well, those are the ones that roll, <clears throat> that fall into role playing. Oh, it's yeah, the okay. pretend people versus the calculators. Yeah, the ones that you know? want to see numbers. And yeah, and, um, <laughs> you know, I fall into that first category because, you know, I'm a hyperactive in extrovert. Mm -hmm. But um, but having the options, and this is one of the things I've learned over the years, um, any GM can turn a game into a role-playing yes. game or a role-playing game. Right. But... It's a lot of work. Yeah, it is. It's a whole lot of work it to turn is. that. So what it sounds like is that you guys are creating an app for the community that um, that removes a lot of that work mm -hmm. for, say, voice actors and stage actors that happen to play Dungeons & Dragons and want some kind of a role-playing system to where, mm -hmm. um, well, a lot like the Fate system where it's very character-driven, uh, character but... 
every every gaming <clears throat> group tends to be a hodgepodge mm-hmm. of the two types. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, excuse me, the Viking that hosts Fluff Talk with me, I know it's a special amount of pain for him because mm-hmm. he is all about crunch <clears throat> and mm-hmm. I'm all about lore. Right, you know, right, right. And so what it's looking like is you've got something for the lore people like me who it's just like, do I pass or fail? Can we get on with the story? Right. But there's very much also the option of if you want to see how the sausage is made with a complex chaos right. calculus, it's there. Right. That's, that's actually a yeah. really good analogy, how the that's, sausage is made. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's okay. actually really – I think you kind of hit the nail on the head because yeah. the, the, I talked about the two, the first two modes. Mm-hmm. Then the, sec, the third mode for the UI is actually the rule for the rules lawyers. Okay. It's, for the, it's, <clears throat> it's where you see literally the whole equation. Okay. You see, like, this is what was added to this and this and then subtracted and then, then every single thing. I mean, all of it's still kind of hidden in tooltips in, mm-hmm. in a way or we're, we're not sure exactly how we're going to do the interface yet. Yeah, but the, the interface is very be, much under work. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I've, I've been focusing on, on core functions. So uh, the, the interface, I, I really made a mock-up for tonight. Uh, okay. Just to, just just to, to show, show you. you. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the interface is very it's super early. Oh, right. nice! But the game, the game back end for the actual game itself mm-hmm. is is pretty polished. I just just have to write fluff for it. I have to write like descriptions of skills. And ah, like you that. see. I mean, it's it's pretty much the core game is done, so you can play it with dice and paper. It's a little lengthy because of the intricacies, but it's yeah, <laughs> because I mean, it's kind of numbers crunchy. It's not terribly terribly intricate, but the idea itself of how many numbers to crunch is. Uh, I mean, cause, so I've been, that's how I've been playtesting it. It's okay, just, just pen and paper. But getting the app going, once that's going, we can see how far we're going to get into what we can do with it. Because I have, I have things planned, like I want to have a section for GMs, obviously, a GM account that you can of course. course through the app. Then I want a player account. But I also want a designer account, where if you want to Ooh, write Ooh, so you're your, talking modding. Oh, no, not just, no, no. I, because I want to do settings, but I, do, I, I like the idea of, of certain role-playing games and how they do, they separate their game system distinctly like discreetly from their settings okay so there are a lot of role-playing games that do that and a lot of role-playing game systems tabletops so i want to do that but also leave that open for players so that if players Mm -hmm. or gms want to create a new setting they can have that account submit it to the to the company and if it goes up we're going to work out something to see if there's any way to get royalties to those players that have created a setting so then the, the players will then become also kind of the designers Okay, so mm-hmm. you've got a um, so you've got an app that comes along, or you have a game that comes along with the app right. that um, shows you a lot of the complex equations if you want to have them. Right. Um, and you're giving the people, uh, the community that gets invested in this, sort of a stake in their own to where they can come up with their own modules or their own skins to put yeah. on these things. Yeah. Okay. All and, right. And, is- and complete settings. Okay. Like if they want to do their a whole setting, they write history for it and all that, submit it to the to the company, and then if it if it gets approved, it'll go up, and we'll see about what what can be paid out. Wow. So this is very much like a crowdsource RPG. Like you're setting up the scaffolding. You're you're setting right. up the game engine. Yeah. And you're giving anyone who's interested a chance to test their chops. So right. this would be um, a lot like a lot like a good homebrew system or a good scaffolding for a homebrew game it's kind of like making homebrew official ah that's what it's it's a lot because it'll it'll be official content and it, and if there's something that doesn't really work what it, what i had worried about doing going forward with something like that is is it going to mess up the the core game system so if it has if it does something like that then i would give them feedback hey this is going to going to change the core game system this is why we denied it but okay. if it if it works then it's official. It, there's no reason for it not to be official. Nice. You know, this this almost is starting to sound like not quite a crowdsourced, but an interaction version of your roots showing. Because this is sounding yeah. very much like the principle of the general use role playing system from Steve Jackson or GURPS. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it sounds like it's being done by a company that's a lot uh, um, more concerned mm-hmm. with what the players want the players are the key even as a gm if you think about it the players are the key like i i've always said this and i know a lot of gms may disagree but i've always said this the gm as as a role is there to service a lot of people take this idea that the gm is is like their god because they control everything else other than the characters 
I look at it as if I don't provide my players with a good story, they're going to go somewhere else. So that's a really fair point. That really is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I when I have games and when I play these games, when I I usually GM and when I do, I want to have a good story out there. So if you understand the idea of, of a GM being the, the servicer, you'll always have that good story because it's all about those players anyway. That's that's kind of the approach I took to the game itself. What do the players really want? Like really, really, what do they want? I mean, do they really want to read rules? <laughs> do, they, like, do they really want to like? Because there's a lore aspect to say like you like. Mm-hmm. There's a lore you know, loving to to figure out all these cool things about the setting. That's great, and they'll they'll read that on their own time, even if they wanted to, because they'll they'll probably like novels and fiction, and, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing, right? But then when you play the game, you want to play the game and make your own story. You want to make your own novel on the spot. That's 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 the 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 big thing with a lot of role players. Well, Some I want don't to break know. Things too. I've had a whole lot of really good gaming sessions where. Mm-hmm. Um, it really consisted of two people arguing about rules for like three and a half hours. Those are some good times, man. I've had those <laughs> you know, it's funny you mentioned that. That's that's really funny you mentioned that because I started this game system, not even the app, I, I, that wasn't even in my head. But I started the game system itself because I played other companies' games and it came down to I had three folders of homebrew, essentially, mm-hmm. and I had official material that I wrote and got co-published and stuff. it came to this thing where I'm like I can't modify this game system anymore without writing a whole new system and someone's like why don't you just do that <laughs> so I started it I mean it was crude but I started it like that's so that's how that's how it all came about okay is, is just that well, right. over the years the, the the game system has become really robust okay yeah uh, it's, yeah. it's 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 undergone a lot of maintenance, a lot of oh my god, yeah. <laughs> countless <laughs> hours of typing, just clack 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 all night. Yeah, you know? I mean he knows because I've, I've yeah. lived with him and there's. I've I've, I've looked through the, <sighs> the millions of words he's written <laughs> on, this, on the game. It's 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 really overwhelming uh, well, looking looking at how much he's written for the game. Well, and the the app is it's being custom, it's being tailor made to this game system. Uh, okay. It's, it's, we're not we're not starting from some sort of template that right. uh, it's already ready for RPGs. This is being written from the ground up for specifically for this yeah. game. Okay. So you got. I mean, <clears throat> this is on the upside, man. You don't have to worry about like being sued for copyright or anything. Mm-hmm. It's like no, 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 mm-hmm. no. We crafted this. We went into the hard drive and we went one one zero 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 one 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 zero 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 one. We got two keys on our keyboard. Okay, there's a one and a zero, and then there's enter somewhere, but I can't find it. Yeah, you know, um, and that is awesome. You see, one of the biggest keys, and for you guys out there, one of the biggest keys to doing anything, anything that you want to do, is you have your idea, and first except that your first draft isn't going to be exactly how you think. And Mm. you have to work it, you have to iterate it, and certain things you have to accept aren't humanly possible with the technology we have at our hand, at at our disposal. And sometimes you got to understand that as cool as it was as an idea, it's just not going to work with the overall thing. And this could take years and has that been your guys's experience in working on this particular project i mean generally when did i approach you first about an app mm, about a year and a half ago jesus man <laughs> like, i haven't even i, I mean yeah you look just, up and it's like oh wait yeah. where did uh, yeah we've been doing this for like a week hasn't it um we started in march dude. Well, the, the, <laughs> oh. the thing is, is that the, the the idea really really sort of materialized slowly and it, it, it was true. sort of an abstract yeah. idea initially. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, over time, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm not like a like a developer for some major corporation or anything like that. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm a hobbyist. I okay. I just like to code. Right. Um, wait, don't tell. Wait. So he's not paying you. You're just doing this because you love it. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, no. I mean, it's, it, it was it was sort of a sort of a hobby project between two friends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. he, he had he had written the game I knew how to code we said what the hell let's let's see what we can do oh yeah, yeah. those never work out he says while well, using his Microsoft and Apple gear <laughs> <laughs> you know? well it, it, it it's it sort of started picking up uh, I, I mean we, we had played around with it a bit uh, yeah between then and now but it, it started picking up a lot more steam when when he started telling me uh, the interest it was generating with the people he was telling 
telling about the app in, 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 in the gaming yeah. community. Especially at, at Unpub Mini at, at the Guild House. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I went to that event. I didn't even think... Uh, I don't remember the guy's name that, that told me to go, but um, I told him about this game I was doing, and he said, you should come to Unpub Mini because people will tell you what they really <laughs> think. Of you know they will. Oh yeah, gamers honest. don't play. No, I, it's true. <laughs> gamers it's, they'll be like, "This so is true. crap." Exactly. What are you thinking? Exactly. Yeah. So I went into that thinking. Uh, at first, I thought maybe I won't even go, and then I at the last minute I was like, "Okay, I'll sign up." And I signed up for for my my time blocks and whatnot. And I was thinking, I'm gonna go to this. People are gonna be like, "This is this is just crap, man. This is like, <laughs> why are you doing? Like, what is what's what's with all of this material? Why why do you why do you want all this? This is just insane." Um. But what I kept consistently hearing, literally, every single review was positive. Some people from the jump were like, "Where's your Kickstarter?" I'm like, I, don't even, I didn't even know I was coming here. Honestly, like that's that was my response. I didn't even know I was coming here. Honestly, I ain't gonna lie. I was that that was gonna be one of the questions I was gonna be asking during this show. So, <laughs> we're, you know. we're working on that. That's I mean, there's things I want to get get settled first, and then I can probably go full time into this. And it, it, would, it would be nice to be able to demo the software. Uh, yeah. When when people go to pay, I mean, no, nobody wants to spend money on on some abstract idea in someone's head somewhere in L.A. You know, it's right, right, right. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But we're not swindlers. As I said, <laughs> I went to see Aquaman today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, clapping on that. Yeah. I so. mean, it 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 really started out as 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 sort of a vaporous idea. You know. It, yeah. It, it, well, every idea does, and sure, that's sure, one sure, of the big sure. things. Uh, um, but but we, we wanted to have a little more traction under our feet first. Um, right. right now, right now the base for for the server software is is pretty well along its way. Um, Actually, that's key. Yeah, I, uh, that's something that that I I really want to highlight for him because the idea is that everyone can can pull out their phones and connect to a GM, right? And they connect to the GM's game. Uh, and so it logs everything. He's he's designing the the all of that stuff to, to work with, to connect every phone to play. Right. So the, uh, t t typically with software like this, you you'll have some some sort of server somewhere at some company. Uh, we we re we really wanted to steer away and steer more towards uh, uh, decentralized servers. So the idea is is every player carries their own their own uh, character sheets with them, mm -hmm. rather than having it stored on some someone else's server somewhere. Right. Okay. Um, the GMs. Uh, who who's, who host these games also have a copy of everybody's character sheet so they can compare, say, you know, uh, if somebody decides to edit their character sheet and make themselves godly, the GM always has the option to say, no, no, no. <laughs> like, no, 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 no sorry, sorry, uh, it's not happening. But we want people to be able to carry their... Who would their do that? <laughs> Any power gamer <laughs> ever. Uh, yeah, or, or, or anybody who... Uses emulators, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we, we wanted we wanted people to be able to take their character sheets and take them to another game, as I'm sure a lot of people do generally. Oh, right. absolutely. Um, right. So, but a big focus is is decentralized servers. And the um, GM setting setting having that set up. Yeah. Um, we 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 want people to be able to to host their own games wherever they are, even if they don't have internet, for example. Uh, right. Right. Okay, so um, everything you guys are talking about sounds amazing. One would almost think that you're gamers. Like, do you guys play <laughs> anything? Or you want to start? <laughs> uh, Jesus. Me personally, I'm I I don't play table tabletop RPGs. No, I'm, I'm yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm 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 definitely gonna have to. I'm de not really gonna have a choice. <laughs> I need to understand this stuff a little better, I think. Yeah. Uh, I I I, mean, I I get the general concept. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I understand Jensen probably a little better than I should. Well, do you play um, like any video games or anything like I that? Because gaming's gaming, you know. That's, that's true. I play plenty. Um, I love I love video games. Particularly, I love I love RPGs and MMORPGs and, and games like that. And uh, I I think yeah. I think having been into into these types of games uh, for as long as I have, it sort of helps a lot with, uh, with trying to bridge the gap in developing this app for, mm -hmm. for somebody who's never. It's never been been really into tabletop RPG games. Yeah. Nice, and um, yeah, and Steve, you are you video game or tabletop RPG or board game like you know? You know I what, will what's say, your bag? Let's see. I will say that I'm all about stories. So entertainment to me has always been fiction, movies, television series, 
then taking those stories and making them into stories. So then what came natural then, what I figured out when I was young was playing tabletop was was easy because I made stories. I watched stories, listened to mm-hmm. stories, read stories. Everything was about stories. So when I play video games, mm-hmm. again, stories. I, I'll play a game like, uh, what's that one I recently played with the astronauts? The Turing Test. Okay. Uh, the Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Um, oh, so heavy Rain. Really like wow. he, like sort of intensely driven stories so I can make more stories. See, that's now when I was growing up, they used to call liar storytellers, you know. <laughs> well, why are you telling stories? <laughs> well, so are actors, right? They're you professional know. liars. No, they tell the truth. Writers lie. But, okay, okay, um, you know you got a point there. <laughs> yeah, but um no, seriously, this is so honestly, what I'm seeing is a really good synthesis between you guys, like a yeah. really good team because um Again, um, this is a balance. Like, you've got, you know, um, Daniel's got the video game thing going. You've got the tabletop thing going. And as I said, gaming's gaming. Right. You know, Um, MMORPGs and stuff, I think they are amazing. (laughs) They really are. Um, And we talk about on the channels a lot, uh, or on all the shows that we do, um, there's nothing wrong with video games. And there's Mm -hmm. nothing wrong with tabletop Playing. Right. And there, there is this big divide between the two, and it's like an MMORPG is a lot like a tabletop RPG, yeah. except since it costs the economy of a small town to make one, <laughs> right. there's not a whole lot of resources for you as a player to go off script. You can't go right. off book because mm-hmm. it takes... 300 programmers, um, 200 animators, That's and true. hundreds of thousands of ge- of um, terabytes to render all the stuff that goes there. Right. So it's it's not like you when you're on a video game, you can go, you know what? I don't think I'm going to go on any of these missions. I'm going to go over there. Oh, wait. <laughs> the rest of the world hasn't been programmed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, sorry, Fallout fans. <laughs> um, right, right. But at the same time, you can do all that stuff on an RPG, mm-hmm. but you don't have the uniform imagery right. as you would with a video game. You know, it, it's when you say fourth level knight that rides a black horse, none of us are thinking the same one. No. <laughs> you know, my horse is different from yours, which is different from his, which is different from yours, yours, and. Yeah, oh no, yours sucks. Your, your, yeah, yours. Yeah, but I like that one. Uh, huh? I like that one. Well, hey, you can't. You can like that one all you want. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I mean, again, one is not better than another. Right. You know, different is different. And right, right. I, I'm a big fan of saying, you know, a good spaghetti is just as good a spaghetti as a good sandwich is a good sandwich. Right. You know, but at the end of the day, it's all food. Mm. So it's all games. Right. It's all games. It's all fun. It's all escapism slash therapy. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm really admiring what you guys are doing. Um, is there a way? Is there a way that the people out there can keep up with you guys on your progress and stuff like that? I post periodically to the Facebook page. Uh, gents, look up Jensen, one word RPG, second okay. word. Okay. Um, yeah. That's it right there. Mm-hmm. That, oh, that's my yeah. logo. Yeah. <laughs> I. I haven't done much recently because I only really got this started since Unpub Mini. Mm-hmm. So things have been on the ground grassroots almost. <laughs> like I've been just working at it like an animal. <laughs> just trying to get, get it out. Yeah. Uh, no, ev- get. Eventually when the app gets a little more along, uh, when there's stuff to preview and see, oh, it's gonna uh, be awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll put up a, a website uh, where, where people can, can see what's going on with it, maybe the progress, right. how they can get involved if... if if we're uh, we're at that point yet, nice, right, right, yeah, very right. nice. Well, you know what, man, I can tell I can tell you guys both, you're definitely on the right track. Um, Hopefully, yeah. you know, coming from someone who came up with a vaporous mm-hmm. idea and pretty much stayed up for two and a half years trying to make everything happen, right? It goes, right? It goes. The time is gonna go, but you know how they say, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, you know that saying, yeah. Yeah, lies. It's all <laughs> lies. The thing is, though, you work your butt off, right? Yeah. But you feel fulfillment, and right. that—that's my question. Are you guys fulfilled with what you do? Ooh, I mean, I have been like the whole time, but I've been designing this since two thousand eight mm-hmm. or seven. Okay. So, I, like the the game aspect. I mean, the the app has been has been in production since mm-hmm. like a year, more than a year or so. Well, honestly, so, I, mean, I would say Daniel has to be fulfilled with all this stuff, or else he wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> right, right. Sure. You know. Yeah. Um, 
I, I like to write code. I like to make stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's enjoyable. Yeah. You know, I, as long as I'm doing that, I'm pretty happy. That is awesome, guys. That is seriously awesome. And I do want to take a super special moment to thank you guys for the language barrier. I'm working so hard. I'm working so hard. Slip like, on a... Yeah, I'm, I'm, get, forgive me. I'm just trying to avoid the things that I usually say that that, that <laughs> follow a curse. Or, Wait, which is yeah. not Purple Monkey Dishwasher. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> just for those of you guys that are new to the channel, we are PG-13 because we want everybody to watch this stuff and honestly be into the stuff that we're doing because, right. again, games are more than just solitary activity. They are a community. Right. Community Social. as parents, community as kids, mm -hmm. community as like a whole family thing. So uh -huh. we're just trying to put that out there for you guys. Um, so yeah, that is some really good stuff. So are you guys playing anything currently? Or is it just work <laughs> all the time? <laughs> what are you playing now nowadays? Me? Oof. Oh, uh, I play Overwatch, play Smite. Uh, I, play, I, I play a lot of games. <laughs> um, Smite, Smite is, is one of the ones that I've gotten into kind of recently because I, I play with some people um, kind of, you kind of put it off like put off trying it no 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 it's, it's more of one of those things that I tried that I just really couldn't get into but somebody uh, some, somebody just kind of hounded yes. me enough that I was like okay alright let's play this thing let's right right this about. Man, I, I get you with all that stuff now Man. in truth I'm not playing any video games right now yeah. it's not because I don't want to it's just, um, I'm catching up on all the things that I write reviews for and running the site and doing podcasts three to five nights a week. So it's like, Ooh. I would love to play some more video games. I mean, this thing right here, kind of a beast, you know, kind of a beast. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've, I've got a GeForce card in that for the editing. So I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. I could, I could pretty much play anything I want right now, but I don't have any time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, and of course I'm, I'm still running the one game a week and the Anomine game once mm -hmm. a month so in nominee you know, yes yes um, wow, I've yeah that before oh well you can check it on the 30th is the next um i live stream all the games <laughs> so yeah it, it, it's a thing so you know i don't have much time to play video games right. and i don't have much time to play any rpgs because i'm gming you know five mm. games a month um boy yeah um to but yeah hmm? to be fair though i, I mean I, I i spend more time doing research than i do playing games or coding well, that's, that's that's the nature true. of work. Yeah, kind of a given, <laughs> you know. But um, I do miss getting. I want to get out there and play some more Eve Online, or not Eve Online. Um, Artemis. Artemis. Artemis was my jam. Artemis. Yeah, Ooh. Artemis was my jam. Yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't played it. Hmm? Um, if you're a fan of Star Trek, it is. It, oh. <laughs> it is. Okay. Um, you play the. It's a land game, so the whole bridge crew is in the living room. <laughs> you're all in the same room. You all have your laptops, and each person is a different department on the bridge. So that one person's killer. engineering, <laughs> one, and the okay. captain doesn't get a laptop. They get the main screen, and they tell everybody what to do. I see. You That's know. actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's There's, actually pretty cool. I like, I like you know, that idea. I'm going to check that out. It's really cool until the crew starts drinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's when it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you crash a lot of ships. That's awesome. <laughs> a whole lot of ships. Parallel and, parking. Yeah, and um, <laughs> what are you playing right now, Steve? Man, what was I playing before Mangio when he took his computer? Jeez. Uh, okay, quite a few. Pretty much anything he was playing. <laughs> Man, oh, I think the last thing I was playing was, uh, what's that one with the medieval? Chivalry. No, no, not Chivalry. I played, yeah, that too. Chivalry is really good. Chivalry is really good. Um, no, it was uh, the one that everyone plays with the Elder Scrolls. Um, oh, um, Dragonborn. Skyrim. 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 That's Skyrim. that's the one I got on. Screaming. And then I just I hacked it because I was like, okay, this the story's taking too long. Hey, 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 hey. Watch it with the cheating. Watch it with the cheating. You want to see stuff in story mode, you do what everybody else does and use YouTube. <laughs> you know what though? No, I I did no way. Yeah, that's just right? doing it the hard way. No, I did it was all story mode. Mm. I did I didn't play online. Um I don't often play games online actually. I, I play games that. that are story driven, like you know, like I said, I, I love the stories, so Yeah, well, I'm not gonna lie, I watch a whole like in the middle of the night, when I could be playing games, except I'm so tired that my hands are shaking. You just want and to veg. 
Oh, no, no. It's more like I'm waiting for the editing bay to render and hoping it doesn't crash. Um, I play a whole bu- – I don't play, but I watch a whole lot of videos. So That's I've like been watching a compiling. whole lot of um, – yeah, exactly. When the code is compiling, you know, same thing. When you push the button and you pray, <laughs> you know, and going, great. Did I push control S before? I hope I did. I hope I did. Oh, I don't geez, remember. And then you're on the console. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah. And I end up watching, like, a lot of things. Like, there's a YouTube channel I watch that does, like, the entire lore of Fallout. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. all of it. Wow, well, uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm watching like, the game movies. Huh? I'm watching the game movies. Yeah. I love yeah. those, actually. Yeah, I, but I, love I don't watch the myself. play. Like, I don't watch somebody playing the game. I watch the... I played this. Now, let me tell you what what's here. Like, there's a oh, dude on YouTube called Oxhorn. And he'll go... This is a storyline from Fallout. I'm going to show you the storyline from Fallout. I'm going to narrate everything. Right. Show you all the all the choices from the dialogue trees. And that'll be the two and a half hour video. And I'm like, mm. all right, cool. It's kind of like a, um, what is the term? Um, one of the hint books or um, strategy guide. It, it's a video strategy guide for the game. And, you know, that gives me, um, that gives me the feeling like I played. You know, I want I want to see one of those one day like narrated by like Ian McKellen or something. Hmm? Like, shock you didn't say Morgan Freeman. <laughs> oh, my, Morgan Freeman's a given. Like, yeah, he's, he's got enough freckles already. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, Ian McKellen's got that Magneto voice. Yeah, I can see that South Park episode. Yeah, I can see <laughs> I it. I love it. And so on this game of Bloodborne, <laughs> I then <laughs> dodged and rolled I love and it. dodged and rolled. <laughs> yeah. And so forth. Yes. Or even Patrick Stewart, you know. Hmm? Oh, Patrick Stewart would be perfect. I'd, I'd love for Patrick Stewart to narrate my life. <laughs> Just follow me around moment everywhere moment. and make everything I do sound awesome. See, honestly, I would love that too, but with the luck that I have, with all the magic that I think I'd get Michael Jackson. That's you know? hilarious. <laughs> I'm like, okay, now now he's just gone over here and he's pouring another cup of coffee. I don't know if that's healthy. Oh, <laughs> you know. Of course, you'd have to keep your life away from children. <laughs> I'd probably get Cleveland or something from uh, family. Like, family oh, guy. man, that's terrible. <laughs> now, he, now he's on the shader. <laughs> you know, now yeah, he's yeah. on the pooper. Yeah, oh, that's bad. That's, <laughs> that's, I was about to he's say language. Yeah. But, um, man, yeah, that is that is definitely a thing. But, again, these there's... A lot of resources out there. Right. Um, and now, honestly, I've been I've been thinking I've been thinking like maybe putting together videos that are like, so this is how to play this character class. And then mm. I realized something: I don't like those videos. <laughs> <coughs> you don't want to be that guy, huh? Well, <laughs> I watch them all. Don't get mm-hmm. me wrong. It's just um, back in the '80s, there was a thing that happened where toys robbed my generation of their imagination mm. by coming up with play, set, play sets. Mm-hmm. So um, if you watch like Toy Story, you've got Buzz Lightyear and Woody and a Barbie and a Mr. Potato Head and Andy's making up all these different adventures. Mm. You can't quite do that with a He-Man play set. Because right. Castle Grayskull's already there, Skeletor's already there. Oh, they Jesus, tell you yeah. who the good guys are, who the bad guys are. Um, and then the play set is like, this is the mission that's happening. And I'm like, well, I can't make anything up now. The whole nope. story is here and all the components. So um, that's why I don't really do those types of videos, you know, because I don't want to do that to another generation saying, if you're going to play a paladin, this is what it is. Mm. If you're going to play a wizard that's running around Los Angeles, this is what you need to know. I'm like, mm, you know, maybe. You know, that's actually that's actually something that's really interesting about um, gaming in general. It, it's why I like I like classless systems, and that's that's what I made my yeah. game like. Is is uh, I'll give you an example. Go on. <laughs> I'll give you an example of something. One of my main players that loves to, to play the game, and I keep telling them this is play testing. So eventually, you're gonna have to remake your character. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> this is, like, just don't get attached. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, he's. Do he's I have to run some Call of Cthulhu for you to show oh, you how? Jesus, insane <laughs> you know? or death? That's like two options. No. Um. So he has a character. So I don't know if you can you can picture this. He has a character that started as as a uh, ranger. Mm-hmm. Uh, became a military scout, became a trained assassin, became a crime boss, and then became a full sorcerer. Okay. So there, where is the class? That's you know, kind of like Damien Dark from the CW shows. It's kind of kind of yeah. kind of, but it, the the idea for the character really became, I'm gonna I'm gonna plan more and not not directly fight anymore. Mmm. Got tired of getting beat up. No, no, <laughs> more like he got tired of having <coughs> planned so much stuff for an assassination that he this is the player playing it you know he, mm-hmm. he wanted to to get things right the first time around and not have to chase a have spend like two or three game sessions trying to chase down somebody he's gonna kill 
You know, we call that too lazy to fail. <laughs> well, I mean, right if you got enough time, resources, so that, yeah. Well, do it right the first time so you don't have to go back and correct and exactly. overcorrect and correct again. <laughs> Just do it right the first time. Believe right. me, it takes less energy. Right. Um, and this is actually one of the things I wanted to talk to you about as far as this goes because I forgot to ask that question. You said you don't really like class systems, so your game, is it skills-based? Like, do you end up... Could you give yourself the title of a profession if you just had the proficient skills? Like, you know, I've got, you know, a 15 in casting and a 14 in fishing and a 12 in sailing. Now I have a shrimp company. You know, is, is it one of those things or do you, you know, because class systems you set out going, I'm going to be a fisherman. So these are the skills I need. Right. I modeled it. I modeled it after. I'll say this first before I continue. I modeled every single game rule of the entire game system out of modeled after real life as much as possible okay without making it too intricate so thus the name sim yeah the general simulation okay that's, that's the, whole, the the game system general simulation role-playing game um the idea is <clears throat> that see just like in real life if you learn those skills the ones you specifically said mm -hmm. you can call mm -hmm. yourself a fisherman if you want if i was if i say got purchased the skills quote unquote to to be an ambassador and then I t decided to take a job to go sneak in somewhere and kill someone, I can then call myself an assassin. Okay. Because in real life, you would, You're right. you could just call yourself an assassin. You can call yourself an assassin even if you never killed anybody. Okay. So like, the <laughs> idea is like, whatever you want to do in the game, as long as you have the points to spend on it, you can do it. And also, most things in the game, mo sorry, most skills in the game grow naturally as a result of using them. Okay. So there will also be a deprecation system where if you don't use it a certain amount of times, it deprecates to a certain level. I am a fan of that. Me too. I'm a huge fan of that. Right. right. So the idea is you, you'll you have this natural progression. You'll have a character where, like my buddy said, um, the, the buddy with the assassin, ranger, crime boss, whatever, he, when he started as a ranger, he didn't realize he was going to be an assassin until he started seeing what skills he was using. And okay. then he those skills just started increasing. He started getting better at sneaking around. He started getting better at certain weapons. And then he decided, I'm just going to learn Assassin then. Because I'm already going that way. Okay, so it, it's very much one of those, are you sure you want to be a vet? Because, you know, you're a much better painter. Right. I mean, in a lot of ways. See, if if you decide you're going to do some, some, you buy one program and then you never use it, program or package, those mm -hmm. are, programs are, packages are sets of skills. Um, if you decide you're going to buy one for a character and you don't use it, it's going to sit there, and it's going to deprecate. It's not going to do anything. And then it's going to be useless, and then you realize, I lost my, my experience points buying that. Okay, so it's, it's you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah, no, I mean, not and completely ever. practice makes permanent. Yes, <laughs> that's actually just like in real life. Oh, wow. I mean, that, I kind of want that for the motto almost, like just like in real life. Okay. But it, the idea of it is going to be a lot like that, is, is things that you want to play in the game. Mm -hmm. When you start using them more, they often increase. Okay. So you'll get that reward of I've been using it; it's been growing. And there's no class in that way. There's <clears> there's no there's not anything to kind of tell you I'm a level anything. It's just what what the character has accumulated for experience. Okay. I like that. I really like that, especially it's, with the jack of all trades, master of nothing kind of kind of thing. There going. are and my one of my players made one of those where literally he bought no packages or skill programs to in nice little neat sets is individual skills individual okay. skills just whatever he wanted and I said you sure you want to play he's like I got an idea I go okay okay you got an idea go for it yes yeah, you were going to say something Daniel uh, yeah um, I, I, I like the, the idea of the degrading skill levels as well uh, mm -hmm. I, th I think it's a good good way to go it stops people from just stockpiling skills yeah that's actually a really good point that's actually a really good point because there's going to be in-game time mm -hmm. and then obviously they're going to have time stamps of, of real time for the logs. But in-game time is whenever the GM hits the day for the next day. Okay. Yeah. So, it, you know, it'll the, the app itself will be able to keep track of how many days this particular skill has nice. gone without being used. Nice. Right. So that's, uh, that's I mean, can you imagine doing that as a GM? Um, I do, do that, that as a GM. <laughs> right. Now, can you imagine Every that GM a, does that. That's You're, okay. <laughs> most GMs do that. It's it's a lot. It's it's, it's, a, it's lot a lot of work to keep so track of. Anything to lighten the load. I'm a big fan of. I, I really am. That's actually so. kind of the nail on the head right there. Because yeah. the, the idea is lightening the load on the player and the GM altogether. Yeah. Now I want to focus on on the app mm -hmm. with the availability for the player to have the information, all the nitty gritty stuff that's in the back back end of it. 
You know, so mm-hmm. when you say when you look in the app and you see a skill, you can hold down the skill. The idea is we're going to have a thing where you hold down the skill. It'll show you a description of the skill, the whole equation of what you've got for the skill and everything. But it hides. Right. It goes away, and then you can look through anything like that in the game. It's just a list of skills. Okay. And selecting a skill will give you more information about that skill. All right. So if you never want to click on it, you don't ever you don't have, have to. to. Yeah. What categories it belongs right. to, what sort of effects it has, a general right. description, etc. All, right. all that stuff hides away uh, when it's not needed. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this this is, you know, now you're saying all this stuff. I'm getting excited. Now I'm just like, <laughs> all right, then let's wrap up the show. Get to work, man. Get to work. <laughs> no, but um Jump job. But yeah, so seriously, man, this is and again, like I said, when you called up and you got here, I was literally working on the game for tomorrow's session. Oh, okay. Nice, <laughs> um, nice, nice. Yeah, cuz weekly one shots is tomorrow right. at 10 a.m. Right. So, right. you know, going through the NPCs and writing oh. the whole thing and, you know, as a GM and I'm I'm a lot like a lot of GMs where I really don't like downtime, and I'm afraid a lot of players are going to do that. Hey, it looks like there's plot outside. Barkeep, (laughs) give me another drink, you know? (laughs) So um, I I write my adventures a lot like a choose-your-own-adventure book. So instead of skill tree, yeah, instead of skill tree, there's a story tree. So I'm like, okay, this is a decision that the players can make. What happens if they they say yes, if they say no, and then I have to write a plot for every single... Every oh, single eventuality, no, no. <laughs> including their own stagnation. That is a lot so, of work. Hmm? That's, a, that's a lot of work. I, I it approach jamming differently. It, it really is a lot of work, but I've had a lot of reluctant players over the past few years. Mm. And um, so I'm like, okay, if you're going to be reluctant, that's cool. I want a consequence for that. Now, right. I want a con- consequence for over-enthusiasm. But right. again, as you can see when you're like, dude, you need an assistant in here. I... I'm yeah. not exactly a control freak. I'm just used to multitasking. Right, so, right. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, this app that you're talking about, dude. <laughs> dude. I mean, there's more features, You are saving too. so many trees from the um, oh, yeah. well, from the notebooks that I would be using. I mean, his yeah. idea, like, even his idea of the map, mm-hmm. we want to do maps where I, I thought then, okay, we can have an overlaid grid as part of the app mm-hmm. where the GM will have a grid and you can insert whatever JPEG file you have and then you have a map, and mm-hmm. you can place your characters on that map, and it'll have a visual field. Nice. So it, can, it can, you can twist your character to face a certain thing and see how far you can see, essentially. Okay. It'll have, and then it'll be parameters for things like penalties for different weather conditions, and that's a slider button on on the GM app. Okay. It's like, okay, weather conditions are bad, so here's your vision penalties, here's your hearing penalties, da 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 da. Very so cool. All those get get sent out to all the phones, to all okay. the player, all the players that are are playing. So all that's all that's done. Like, say, like you, you, your character. You're gonna be working this man to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, we, we've got a deal, though. We've got a deal. I I do the tedious coding that he teaches me how to do, ah. and then he he designs like the I, I core. See, code. I see what you're doing. I see. You're yeah, like, he, he all right, take, if you really want this intricate thing, he ta- he, he you do it. You take. I, I, I write the I write the code, and he takes care of the grunt work, filling yeah. out, filling okay. out all this stuff. I mean, it particularly helps with stumps, something like uh, skills, for example. Mm-hmm. I don't need yeah. you sitting there typing down like, <laughs> right, right, eight million database entries for skills. Right. Okay. See, and see that that is a good partnership right there. Yeah. That is, that is really what I think. So I don't see I don't see a um I, I see more of a Jobs and Wozniak between you two than a than a Jobs and a Gates. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. I'm, I, I, so. I'm sure I'd almost agree if I didn't hate Jobs. <laughs> like, I, we're just talking the positions. That's all. Right, just, right, just, right, right. Just right. you know, hey, I got the idea. I, I can think and I, of a I position for jobs. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. I'm, hey, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I'm a Wozniak fan. I really am. I'm like, that's the dude that actually made everything work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wasn't great with marketing, but dude, he he he's the one that made everything work. But then again, AC Green was my favorite Laker, and the Martian Manhunter is my favorite JLA guy. So, mm. um, you know, yeah, it says a lot. I, I don't know what any of that. Was. <laughs> AC <laughs> yeah, Green was yeah. number forty-five in the Lakers. Yeah, um, never missed a game, had all the championship rings, never got any press. He had integrity. <laughs> yeah, he had a whole lot. Yeah, a whole lot of integrity. Um, he showed up. He did the job. He did the job to the best of his ability every single game. He, and again, he was, he was the only Laker whatever. during um, their heyday back in the late '80s, early '90s that never missed a game. Yeah. Never missed a game. Magic Johnson missed a game. You know, and right. Magic Johnson was the last of. He was the legendary Laker before um, Kobe. 
you know, yeah. and he was the Kobe Bryant of his day. But <clears throat> AC Green, every game, he was who's always it, there. Who's it before that, it was Kareem, right? Um, before Magic, yeah, uh, yeah, it went Wilt Chamberlain, Wilt Kareem, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, Wilt the Stilt, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, Kobe, and then came LeBron. So I know so, at least one of those names, and, <laughs> you know, and of course, you know, there was Shaq, right. <laughs> um, but Shaq was more a star and he was a good baller, but you know, he, he was a dunker, wasn't a shooter. Right. But yeah, but AC Green, AC Green was the dude that you can count on with the Lakers. Reliable. So always, reliable. always reliable. Like Jason Witten with the Cowboys. Exactly. That That's yeah. exactly it. You mm-hmm. know, yes. Mm-hmm. Or like, player. or like Wozniak. One of my favorite player. <laughs> you know, doesn't matter yeah. what, a- what Apple was doing, if Woz was there, it worked, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So yeah, so that that's the whole thing. So, man, yeah, this this has been fun. This has been seriously fun. I know we're I only so. at an hour, um, but we started a little late because we got <laughs> stuck in that conversation. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh boy, man. I got that that that. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for coming down and staying so late. You know, right, right. Um, man, there is you know so much stuff that's going on. Are you guys going to be playing any games? Um. In the next in the next couple of weeks, like you got anything lined up, or is it just work? Okay, I gotta say something. Uh-huh. <laughs> my buddy, you know, monkey, mm-hmm. he actually texted me on my way back home from what I was doing earlier mm-hmm. in, in the day, and he's like, "Let's game." I was <laughs> like, "What time?" He goes, "He goes seven o'clock." I'm like, "Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm doing." Oh, did you tell him about the podcast? Yeah, You're I like, told oh, him. I told him about the podcast. Yeah, all right, cool, cool, all right. So. I, I think we're going to end up doing that tomorrow, maybe. Well, you never so, know. We'll I mean, see. it's only 9 o'clock now, and if he's gaming, you can always be so late to a session. that's what he said. I don't, I don't know what he's going to be, you know, what's going to be his availability, but I'm going to call him. Uh, All right. Yeah, well, very cool. Very cool. So, thank you guys for showing up. Like, seriously, yeah, this sure. is really cool. And again, I forgot to do it, but thank you guys in the deck mob. Say what's up, NP City. And um, Vixen is there. I, I'm going to have to give that woman an award. Um, and thank you you guys for clicking on this video and checking it out um we really appreciate the stuff that you guys um well we really appreciate the fact that you guys show up and watch all this stuff if i'm not looking at you it's because how how can i put it it's really embarrassing to watch a black guy blush (laughs) um but with that i'm gonna say if you guys have any other questions um how can the people on the internet reach you with questions and comments and all that other stuff um the design for now will go th- well, most of most of the the questions like that will go through me, mm-hmm. and I can relate if it's if it's a computer design issue, I can relate relate to him. But um, I'll take all, all the questions from here on. It'll mm-hmm. be the only way right now is jensimrpg at gmail dot com. Okay, that's jensimrpg at gmail dot com, and of course you can always check out their stuff on jensimrpg um, on the Facebook. Right. You know, oh ah ah no no stop oh, that stop that. Cut that day. Yeah yeah yeah. Always when you got your, on the Facebook. Cut down four hundred tabs to go. like fifteen. <laughs> I, yeah. It's because I do so much research for the game. Yeah. And um, again, like I said, I wanted to thank you guys for showing up, and thank um, all of you people out there um, for clicking on this video and checking out the stuff that um, checking out the stuff that we're doing and joining us for another episode of Coffee and Conversation. And if you guys want to talk to us or ask me any questions about these guys, then feel free to hit us up at backinthedeck. Uh, backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-D-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Um, check out the archives over on YouTube because God knows where you're watching this. It could be YouTube. It could be Patreon. It could be the uh, backinthedeck.com. It could be in a lot of different places, but check out some of the archive on YouTube. Check out the archive over at backinthedeck.com. Um, feel free to follow us on Twitter at Back in the Deck. Um, and <coughs> while you're talking to these guys on um, Gen Sam Space RPG on Facebook, while you're already there, why not sign up for Deckers on the Book and talk to some of us, talk to some of our guests, you know, do that whole thing where you guys can have fun talking to people, get to know each other. Oh my God, make a community grow and make a whole bunch of friends all around the world. Never hurts to, when you need a sofa to crash on. Now, if you guys are like me and you are in traffic, <coughs> 
all day, all night, because we're in Southern California and everybody drives, even our pets. Um, don't be watching us right now because you should be watching the road. That might be a semi or a biker. And you should be listening to us on SoundCloud, which is where our audio archive is. And if you guys do that, then you can download the audio from every single show that we record for free for you for ever and follow us on the instagram um at back in the deck check out our patreon page at back in the or at patreon.com slash bid underscore p um become a patron do that whole thing with the patronage thing help us keep the doors open if you want to do a direct um donation then hit us up at the gofundme <clears throat> ah, ah, man, it's getting late. Um, yeah, hit us up at the GoFundMe at GoFundMe.com slash BID underscore P. And if anybody tells you that you can't have the hobbies you like because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual preference, a disability, or your budget, you just tell them that we said take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, saying thank you guys for showing up to another episode of Coffee and Conversation. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>